Hey guys, how's it going? Tyler Blanchard, Big Blue Shampoo. Um, I just want to make a quick video about Evan Ingram, uh, one of my favorite players on the Giants, um, and here's why. Now, I posted on Twitter. It was a, it was a reply to, to Pro Football Focus. Uh, they actually rated Evan Ingram higher than Zach Ertz and made Evan Ingram the most productive tight end in the NFC East, which... Um, it's, it's not just like their opinion. It's like people don't understand pro football focus. It's actually, uh, my nose is always really itchy. It's actually, it's actually mathematics and statistics and algorithms that they use to determine the grades of these players. It's not like, you know, a bunch of morons are just l watching football games and being like, Oh yeah, dude, he's so much better. No, it's like they're looking at not only the stats, but also a snap by snap, like efficiency. <laughs> How is he in the run game? How is he in pass catching? How is he in pass protection? How is he in, you know, on special teams or whatever. And they're looking at all that stuff and they're grading it. And that's how they're getting those grades. So it's not just like their opinion. It's like every player goes through the same process. And they have teams and teams of analysts just watching tape and watching tape. So when they say that Evan Ingram is graded higher than Zach Ertz, there's a reason for it. It's not just that they think that Evan Ingram is better than Zach Ertz. Now, as a Giants fan, I really want to agree with them. Like, I really want to I, I want to believe Evan Ingram is better than Zach Ertz. Obviously, Evan Ingram doesn't ha, didn't put up 1,100 yards this season and 100 and, you know 120 receptions. I'm going to look in, at, at the stats in a second. He had like 45 receptions for like 570 something yards and had a really solid sophomore season, especially the latter half of the season where he was actually playing and getting those reps in. And, you know, getting, you know, playing more snaps. Um, first off, I want to say on Twitter, I replied to that. I replied to that and I said something to the effect of, you know, he he's better at blocking, being athletic, being dynamic. Um, he's a more athletic player than Zach Ertz. I, I did say, now, a lot of this, I like, when I'm on Twitter, I'm not serious. Like, like I'm just not a serious person on Twitter. I'm going to be a lot more straightforward with like you on videos than I am on Twitter. Cause I think it's hilarious when people like literally lose their crap over something on Twitter. It's, it's so hilarious. And, and with this situation, I had like at least, I want to say 15, 20 people like in my mentions, like constantly like calling me an idiot, telling me I'm on drugs for thinking that Evan Ingram's better than Zach Ertz. Oh, let me try to fix my hat. Um, saying I'm on drugs, saying, Oh, I want what you're smoking. Uh, um, which is so basic. And I, I just think it's hilarious. So I said that he was better at catching passes, which to, to their credit is not true. Um, Evan Ingram is not better at Zach Ertz than catching passes. Now, one guy said that Evan Ingram had stone hands. That's not true either. Let me look at the stats real quick. Now, his rookie campaign, yes, I would agree with you. He had stone hands. Absolutely terrible in drops. His catch percentage was 55.7%. That's absolute garbage. In 2018, his true Evan Ingram form came out. He, rook he, he, he loosened up. He worked out those rookie kinks, and he posted a 70.3 catch percentage, which is really, really solid. Um, Zach Ertz did do slightly better, 74.4, but still probably averages like a 60, probably averages like a 68 pass uh, catch percentage over his career. But Evan Ingram, 70.3, the argument that he has stone hands is tired. It's tired, man. Stop saying Evan Ingram drops every football. You didn't watch his 2018 campaign if you still think that he, he's always dropping passes. Yes, in 2017, he had a lot of dropped passes. It's not true anymore. He was a rookie. Um, everyone knows he has. Everyone who has watched Evan Ingram in college knows that he has excellent hands and and he'll he'll catch every ball thrown his way. Now, 
Why do people think that Zach Ertz is better than Evan Ingram? Well, number one reason is probably that he's been in the league longer. Uh, 2018 was his sixth season in the NFL. So obviously, you know, averaging like probably 850 yards a game or a game, 850 yards a season, uh, you've, you've, you've established yourself as an elite tight end in, in, the, in the National Football League. But Evan Ingram's in his second year. Um, he actually had a more productive first two seasons than Zach Ertz did. I want to put that out there. Zach Ertz in his first two seasons had respectively 469 yards and 702 yards. Now, Evan Ingram had 722 and 577 yards, and he was injured in five games out of 11 for his sophomore year. So Evan Ingram... Slightly better than at Zach Ertz's first two years. It, does that mean that Evan Ingram's going to start averaging 850 yards a season? Uh, I don't know, but I think that he definitely, you could definitely can make a case that he's not any worse than Zach Ertz based on those numbers. Um, also, just involvement in the offense that he's part of, of, on the team that he's on. Evan Ingram doesn't get the 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 targets that Zach Ertz get. Let me tell you how many Zach Ertz targets there's been in 2018 156 that that's absolutely bonkers that's bonkers 156 targets why because he's really the only legitimate he's the only legitimate like threat on that offense um I they still have Alshon Jeffrey but he doesn't produce like he used to 156 targets, man, and 116 receptions. That's really solid. That's really good. It, it made for a 74.4 catch percentage, which is obviously really good. Really good. That's elite. Um, which, you know, that that is better than, than Evan Ingram. But um, his yards per reception was only 10. 10 even. Evan Ingram, 12.8 yards per reception. So that tells me. So, with 45 receptions, 577 yards that Evan Ingram had, if you double those 90 receptions, he's already over 1,100 yards. Pretty much right where um, Zach Ertz was, with uh, 26 less receptions than him. So, all I'm saying is, if you give Evan Ingram all those targets, he's going to do way more with that. He's gonna do way more than he he's gonna do way more than Zach Ertz did with his 116 um, receptions. Evan Ingram is a more fluid athlete. He's faster. He's more agile. Um, he's a bigger matchup or a bigger mismatch um, against linebackers and safeties, and they're not gonna be able to cover him because he runs a 440. Um, 40 time. He's the fastest tight end in football, uh, easily. And Zach Ertz isn't that fast. He's not that athletic. He's athletic. He's fast. He's a good route runner. He's obviously one of the best tight ends in football, but he's not faster than Evan Ingram. You can't tell me that he's faster than Evan Ingram. You can't tell me he's more athletic. You can't tell me he's a better route runner. You also cannot tell me he's a better blocker. The argument that Evan Ingram is not a good blocker is absolute bull crap. The only reason people still think that he's not a good blocker, hold on, let me just check my time. The only reason people still think that Evan Ingram's not a good blocker is because people have said that. It's not true. If you actually watch, now, I had someone say that to me on Twitter. Oh, why don't you actually watch the tape, man? Like, he freaking sucks at blocking, bro. He can't freaking block for crap. Um, Evan Ingram can block, um, and he's not. Too small to be a tight end. 6'3", 240 pounds. Does that sound, does that sound small to you? Zach Ertz is only 10 pounds bigger than Evan Ingram. Does that make him a worse tight end? No. That's prototypical tight end size. 240 pounds isn't prototypical. It's slightly smaller, but he's certainly big enough to be a tight end. I, I don't understand why that's still like an argument. Oh, he should be switched over to wide receiver. Okay, he'd probably be a good wide receiver. There's a reason he's a tight end in the National Football League. It's because he's a better tight end than a wide receiver. I think it's bullcrap. Like, I'm really glad 
I'm really glad some of these fans are not general managers because the NFL would suck. All right. But moving on from that, um, Evan Ingram is, he's a, he's a mismatch, but he can block. Obviously he's a, he's more of a receiving tight end. He's going to start to show that as his career progresses, I think, but he is also a really competitive blocker. He's also, obviously he doesn't have a ton of size for a blocker, but it's all in technique, man. Like, just look at Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard can block really well. Sterling Shepard's 5'10", like 190 pounds. So so why can he block? So if we're just talking about size, why can he block but Evan Ingram can't? The fact is Evan Ingram can block. If you actually watch tape, like that guy on you know Twitter said that I wasn't, if you actually watch tape of Evan Ingram, and I'm not just talking about highlights. I'm talking about like snap for snaps on YouTube, like of you know full games of every snap that he's that he was part of. Then it will show that he actually does have good blocking technique, and he he is a very he's a he's an efficient blocker. Um, now you could probably show me some plays where he's you know missed blocks or you know a, a defender got a be- the better of him because of his size. I'm sure that's happened. Evan Ingram's not a bad blocker. It's a tired argument. It's a tired argument. He's a very, I won't say he's a very good blocker, but he's hes certainly NFL level blocker. And Zach Ertz isn't that good of a blocker either. Let me just put that out there. Uh, they're actually probably neck and neck in the blocking department. Um, but that's really all I want to talk to you guys about. Um, give, Ev- give Evan, give Evan, in- sorry, give Evan Ingram those, those targets and he's going to do more with it. He's going to do more with that. He's going to put up, you know, 1,300 yards. Easy. 13, 1,400 yards. Um, now, his rookie campaign was his rookie campaign. He was 55.7% catch percentage. That that sucks, but he's not, he's not going to do that poorly anymore. Um, at least I don't think he will. I mean, going from 55.7% to 70.3%, yeah, he's he's a much better player now than he was when he was a rookie. And everyone anyone who's like followed him in college knows that Evan Ingram's got really good hands and and when you throw him the ball, he's going to catch it. Uh just when you're when you're a rookie, you're still getting used to, you know, NFL throws, NFL routes. Um you know, it, it probably all factored into also like at, Eli Manning was not as good in 2017 and the offensive line wasn't as good and you know, there's probably all these off balance throws that Eli made and, you know, bad throws that he just couldn't catch. So, and yeah, Evan Ingram had a ton of drops, but it's neither here nor there because we're not in 2017 anymore. Uh, we're not in 2018 anymore. We're in 2019. And I think Evan Ingram's going to have a really good year. Guys, thank you for watching this video. Um, follow me on Twitter. All the links down in the description. Uh, catch me for the next video. Uh, where we're going to be talking about Landon Collins and his recent drama going on with his locker and all that crap. It's all really dumb. Guys, I'm a huge New York Giants fan. If you're a New York Giants fan, hit subscribe, um, and we're going to talk. I'm very opinionated, and I'm very meticulous in watching New York Giants football. Uh, A lot of the games I watch twice, especially the wins, and I do not miss games. I just don't. Um... So I'm gonna start doing these videos a lot more. Um, yeah, just give me, give me a, give me a, give me a subscription. No, give me, just say the subscribe and follow me on Twitter, and yeah, we're gonna have fun together. Uh, have a beautiful day, and I love you. No, I don't. <laughs>